Okay, I'm going to call us to order at 7.10 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find the agenda for tonight's meeting on our, our OneNote link. Um, does everyone have a copy of that? Has it been dropped in the chat? Let's drop that in the chat. I can get it in the chat. I just had to mute the live stream because I was hearing you multiple times. One. Fantastic. Just give me one second. Is my... Yeah. I want to share my screen as well. Yep. And um, actually up on the top yep. here, I will put it in, in chat, but on live notes, it's the link for the one note is always in the header of the live notes that is being projected on screen. But I will also drop that hopefully in the chat if it lets me copy Great. it. Okay. So the first, uh, Next item on our agenda is attendance. So when our secretary is ready, I will go ahead and let her uh, be the one to take roll call attendance. Okay, um, Ms. McArdle. Present. Mr. Smith. Okay, I will double check anyone, but I'm just gonna mark him right now as absent. Mr. Hagopian. Here. I am present, Mr. Blankenship. I'm present. Mr. Bowen? Here. Mr. Elliott? Here. Mr. Nikayla? Here. I, okay, thought I saw you. Mr. Rufo? Mr. Rufo? Uh, and Madam Chair, um, I might ask you to reach out to Mr. Rufo. I'm yep. He was not at the last bylaws meeting either. So I just have to say that I want to make sure everything's okay. You um, got it. Mr. Banner? Present. Mr. Duque? Present. Mr. Eklund? Mr. Eklund? Ms. Eiler? Present. Mr. Ford? Present. Ms. Gabbard? Here. Mr. Nana? I am here. Mr. Watkins? Yo. Mr. Clark? Okay, let me just mark that. Mr. Cowan? Martin Cowan is present. Mr. Dassing? Here. Mr. Hall? I do not see Mr. Hall, the new New Hampshire vice chair. Whoops, had two commas there. Mr. Daniel? I am here. Mr. Pankey? Okay, let me mark that. Mr. Chunyevich? Okay, so far, Region 6, we don't have anyone. Ms. Yeniskavich? Here. Okay, let me just submit into the room. Um, what staff members are present? Is Ms. Houston here? Here. Is there any other staff present? Not that I know of. I'll scan the list one more time. Okay, and I did see Robert, uh, Richard Brown, excuse me. Um, is here, so I will note him. I do not see Mr. Um, I do not see Chase. Okay, um, so uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Out of the officers, Mr. Smith is absent. Out of the at large, Mr. Rufo is absent. Out of the regionals, we do not have a regional or an alternate for Region Six. Um, and other than that, all of the regionals are present. With their primaries out of the alternates, Mr. Clark, Mr. Hall, and Mr. Pankey are additionally not present. But if they, I'll try to keep an eye and update that if they come in. Got it. I have messaged some of the regionals and our vice chair. Madam Chair, I missed the call to order time. I believe it was about 510 or 508-ish. Yes. It was uh, 710 Eastern. 
that's what I have. Okay, perfect. But I, I'm mountain. Let me just put seven. Though. Yeah, yeah. Let's do everything in Eastern. Thank you. That's, that's same for me. I'm operating in a different time zone. Okay, so what we're going to do next is public comment. That's the next item on the agenda. So here's how it works. If you're new, go down there to the bottom of your screen. Uh, you should be able to uh, find reactions and you want to raise hand. That's what you want to do. Uh, you want to pop the participants out. So you can see over on the side uh, the order that I will be calling on people. And I am everyone, also going to make... Uh, please say your name. It's your state. Thank you. I'm also going to make a brief comment at the end because I just got um, an interesting update that I think everybody would like to hear. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with uh, public comment. Ms. Harless, did you want to... Uh, I would like to do the housekeeping thing, if you would permit me, Madam Chair. Absolutely. Okay. Um, everyone, uh, meeting registration needs to be done at least an hour ahead of time. Um, I was able to handle a lot of registrations beforehand here, but it really kept me from doing things I need to do to prepare for the meeting. I will always try to accommodate late registrations, but if you don't register at least an hour ahead of time, there's no guarantee you're getting into the meeting. And just please be courteous um, on my time and register ahead of time. I would truly, truly appreciate it. Um, LNC members, I would really appreciate it if you'd register a couple days ahead of time. If you're having issues, you know, contact me, you know, at my email or text me and we'll work through it. I'll get you your registration link, you know, whatever is needed. Thank you. All right. Let's go to our um, our first person who has public comment. That's Nathan Madden. Nathan, go right ahead. Hello, everyone. All you fine party people. Uh, my name is Nathan Madden. I'm from Arizona. I just wanted to, again, ask for anyone who's listening, anybody who's here, to please support the CRM. The CRM project is one of our greatest and finest tools in the whole party. And the states get a lot of use out of it. And um, this is an amazing tool that we can use for organization, for donation, for all of the party needs. I just wanted to say that again, and thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Madden. And um, Mr. TJ Kosin, go right ahead. I just want to express my support for Angela and all those who have worked tirelessly to organize the Rage Against the War Machine rally. This rally is a testament to the passion and commitment of our community to the cause of peace and the rejection of war. I understand that some people may not agree with every speaker that will take the stage on February 19th. However, I would like to remind everyone that the message of peace should not be overshadowed by our disagreements on who speaks. We must remain focused on our shared goal of creating a better world free from violence and conflict. Since Angela has taken over as chair of the Libertarian Party, we have seen a remarkable transformation. Committees are functioning efficiently, and we have a chair who's available 24-7 to address the needs of the party. Angela has demonstrated her unwavering commitment to the cause of liberty, even taking only a few days off after giving birth before returning to work for the party. Let us all come together to support Angela and the Rage Against the War Machine rally. Let us use this opportunity to send a clear message to the duopoly of peace to the world and to stand in solidarity, solidarity for a better future for all. Thank you, but because if we don't, it may be too late. We're probably going to end up at war with Russia either way, but at least we try. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kozen. Uh, up next, we have Matt Lawrence. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to piggyback off of uh, what TJ Cozen said. I'm uh, Matt Lawrence from Nebraska. Uh, sorry about that. I'm also a uh, county chair uh, and a veteran. So um, obviously, like uh, this rally um, means uh, a little bit, not any more than anybody else, but you get what I mean. Uh, like I said, piggybacking off of uh, what uh, TJ was saying, uh, it, I would encourage everyone to support this rally. Uh, I will be there myself. Uh, I believe in enough that I'm volunteering and uh, bringing my 14 year old son to uh, help participate and, and witness this uh, event that uh, 
will be something we can use at our local level to show what the value is in single issue coalitions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Up next, we have Dean Davison. Go right ahead. Oh, but you're muted. Uh, am I up now? Thank you. Um, th first off, I'd like to thank uh, the LNC. I've, I was appointed to the uh, awards committee. I want to come on here and thank everybody uh, for that, uh, allowing me to be on that committee. Um, you're doing a great job, Angela, and the rest of the LNC. Um, I do have some concerns on the, on the aspect of the Rage Against the War Committee. Uh, I mean, the thing, uh, I believe we should not have a a person that is actually a convicted sex offender speaking. If the least thing we do, we turn our back to that person um, and uh, go against that person since we our party did not bring that person in to speak. That's the least we could do. Um, I know there's a lot more that's being done um, in other states and people and thought processes. But I just want to thank you first for being uh, allowed to be on the committee, the awards committee, and uh, just uh, let you know the way I. I would just want to let you know what I thought about that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Davison. Up next, we have Sarah Eisenhower. Sarah, we can't hear you. Sorry about that. I was muted. I apologize. Um, I'll be brief. I'm Sarah Eisenhower from Kansas, and um, I have had the honor of working with Angela and the rest of the organizers for the Rage Against the War Machine Rally. Um, what I'd like to share is just that um, that's a, gr a, a large group of people who are prioritizing, you know, see the current danger and are prioritizing that this is the most important thing that we put our efforts towards right now. And I, like I said, I'm honored to be a part of that group. Um, I know Angela has worked tirelessly. I honestly don't know how she does it, but that's neither here nor there. Um, all I, you know, for me personally, I, uh, you know, do not agree with Scott Ritter and I'm not a fan of him, but as a mom of a 15 year old, I cannot um, imagine kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater here with this rally over a, you know, one or two minute speech from somebody that I'm personally morally opposed to what, you know, for me, um, I just think about my son and I think that I have to do every single thing that's within my capabilities to do. And so that's why I'm here. And that's why I hope that other people will support the rally and support him and her efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Eisenhower. Up next, we have Travis Lerrell. I apologize if I butchered your name. No worries. You've got it. Uh, I'm Travis Lerrell from Maryland. And I'd like to uh, just say that I support the Rage Against the War Machine rally. I'm very happy to see this has happened. Um, I'm a veteran, so obviously this is near and dear to my heart. But also, I try to work with the effort for the Defend the Guard Act, which is currently uh, hitting the legislature here, legislature here in Maryland. And it's actually helped to pull attention to military issues. And hopefully we can get some progress on that bill as well. I just recently talked to my senator. And seeing that there's a rally coming to town, that definitely adds a little bit more weight to what we're talking about. So I'd like to say thank you to all those who have put in all the time and effort. I know this is a huge, complex undertaking. And you all have worked very hard on it. So thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Lerrell. Um, next, we have Olga Maria. Hey, just need to unmute myself. Um, I'm Olga Maria, I'm a doctor clerk. I'm the chair for the Libertarian Party of Vermont. So just greetings to everyone from the very cold state of Vermont. Um, we are organizing a sister rally in Montpelier with anti-war progressives who were very hesitant uh, with creating a coalition with us, but are have been inspired to do so because of this action happening in D.C. Um, if we've learned anything, it's that there is always going to be individuals who are problematic or controversial. If we allow that to derail any libertarian action, we literally would have no events. It is imperative that we stay focused on the goal of this event, which is building a broad coalition of people who we do not align with politically. 
But because of our philosophical consistency of being anti-war and pro-peace, these folks are calling us to join in these events and on building actions in the future. Um, this is actually incredibly important for the work that we can get done in our respective states. So I would say um, for all of us that we stay focused on this, um, stay focused on what we're trying to do. Yes, there are individuals that we don't like, that we don't agree with 100%. Um, people can choose to turn their backs. People can choose to, if they're doing a watch party, to turn the volume down. But overall, I think the more attention we bring to this, um, we're actually, we're actually just you know, taking the focus away on what we on what we are creating, which is actually much bigger than this event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Up next, we have uh, Susan Hogarth. Susan, go ahead. Yeah, Susan Hogarth from North Carolina. I will be up there with a van load of people. Um, I am part of an organization that so far is helping to sponsor this rally. We really believe in it. I really believe in it. I think single issue coalitions or a fantastic and vital idea, and I'd like to see them pursued more. And I understand, I appreciate all the work everyone's put in to this, uh, and I understand the issues in single-issue coalitions, and I know that there's always going to be tension among the groups. Um, this is not a case of, the Scott Ritter thing is not a case of people um, not wanting to work with communists or nazis or you know people who are maybe anti-war but don't align with us and other things because obviously that's what a single issue coalition is about scott ritter has explicitly out or described himself as being pro-war and not only pro-war but pro-genocide in russia v ukraine he said if for those of you who missed it that uh, I don't know how many of you have read To Kill a Mockingbird, but Russia is the heroic Atticus Finch taking it that should take out the rabid Ukraine. That's a call for genocide. So this is not an issue of coalitioning with someone that we don't necessarily agree with on all political issues because he's socialist or whatever. This is someone who's coming into an anti-war rally who is explicitly pro-war, and that's a big problem. I, and we can make that go away by getting rid of him if people are so supportive of his pro-war position that they also leave the rally. That's a plus. Um, and I would like to see us pull this out uh, and putting the onus on the people who are bringing up this problem. Oh, you know, you're just trying to, you know, put a wrench in the monkey, wor <laughs> monkey okay, so wrench in well, the works. I know my time's up. Yep. But... Um, I would Thank like you. to see us get rid of him. Thank you, Susan. All right. Um, except I just muted myself. Okay. I think that is everyone who had their hands up for public comment. We'll provide public comment at the end of the meeting as well, uh, so long as we don't run out of time. Um, let me time myself to be fair. So this issue coalition has been a real test of will and it shows us uh, what politics are actually like sometimes. There are mistakes that were made. I should have done more to vet. I apologize, that is 100% on me. I pushed that off to someone else and um, there are people who genuinely believe the innocence of this uh, individual regarding his convictions. Uh, there are people who definitely do not. Uh, I'm very sympathetic to the people who don't. It's a... Uh, uh, there was a lot of work done behind the scenes, maneuvering. Um, there's more than I can say about that, not on a recorded call, but uh, it's been very challenging and I'm still working on that situation and I can talk with people about that privately. Um, I will tell you that while we are definitely feeling the pain, uh, the People's Party has also felt some pain. They have had um, a lot of relationships completely ruined. Um, they're done because... The, um, because they're working with us. So Code Pink, um, uh, Roots Action, Veterans for Peace, um, Freedom US, Women's International League for Peace, like these are groups that they won't ever work with the People's Party again because they're working with the evil um, um, gun-toting, uh, racist, uh, bigot, uh, homophobes who um, are neocons. And that's that's us. That's what, that's what, unfortunately, a lot of these far-left groups think. 
So there has been some pain on both sides. Uh, I definitely want to acknowledge though, everyone hears uh, frustration. And um, I just want to say like, we need to hold the line. This, this rally, if we ended, it would, in my opinion, be fraudulent because people have pledged money um, believing that it's going to go on. And if we pull official support and pull all of our funding out, then it won't happen. It'll fall apart. People have purchased plane tickets and our volunteers have put in a tremendous amount of work. So I just want to encourage everyone to hold the line and let me keep working on things behind the scenes to try to get an outcome that everybody is going to feel comfortable with. And I want to leave you with a good announcement, which is that right when this meeting started, I got an email from Dan McAdams who said, Ron Paul is going to be joining the event personally. So at the end of this meeting, I'm going to be sending out a message to him, um, welcoming him. So our headliners are Ron Paul, Tulsi Gabbard, Jill Stein, Dennis Kucinich, and someone I'm probably forgetting. Um, that's really incredible. And, and, and we pulled it off. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, that's going to be the end of public comment right now, unless um, I see we have one hand up. Let's do the last public comment and then let's move on really quickly. Um, we have Irene Mavrakakis. Uh, if you've got two minutes or, or shorter, go for it. Hi, my name is Irene Mavrakakis and I'm from Delaware. I'm the Kent County Chair and State Board Representative. And I'm also co-founder of Liberty Speaks, one of the coalition sponsors. And I just like to say that I'm so incredibly grateful for the Libertarian Party support and Angelo's work on this coalition. I think this is historic and epic. And I just really try to encourage people to understand that the complexities of speaker issues and the complexity of a coalition of this type sometimes make us have difficult decisions. I don't support Scott Ritter at all, but that has nothing to do with the fact that we have to keep going and we have to appreciate the fact that this coalition is bigger than any one person that is causing some problems and we have to stick together. And thank you so much, Angela, for everything that you're doing. And as an organizer, I'm just very grateful and proud to be part of this. Thank you, Irene. All right, let's move on in our agenda. Our next agenda item is... I just oh. hit my screen. Oh my gosh. Uh, the policy manual changes, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. I just accidentally shrunk everything to the size of a centimeter. And Mr. Pankey, let me update. Um, he has just entered. Great. Do we have any other LNC members who've, who've joined? Just Mr. Pankey. Okay, did you want me to um, do the policy manual item? Yes, please, thank you. Okay, so let me pull up new business with previous notice. If you remember from last time, and I certainly invite Mr. Elliott or Ms. Yaniskavich to jump in because this was a committee project and we don't really like have a chair of this committee. We've all worked equally. Um, Last meeting, we had both the special rules of order and the standing rules, but in the interest of time and compromise, we postponed the standing rules portion to this meeting. Um, so these the notice has, has been given on this for a couple months. Part of our proposal has been withdrawn. Um, as staff has indicated, they would like to work with us on massaging some language, and that is the portion on the APRC. So I've kind of uh, redacted out that portion. Um, it doesn't mean we're removing it. Um, we're just not changing it at this time. Um, a meeting is being planned for February um, between the committee and our executive director. So um, I am going to, because this has been out here for a while, I'm going to scroll through on the screen um, the changes. Um, these are the changes I'm going to move uh, since it came out of committee, I don't think it requires a second. Um, and I would prefer to, rather than sit here and like, you know, spend an hour going through every change, um, I'd prefer to address ones that people might have questions or concerns on. Um, but I'll briefly um, go through it again. The purpose of this was to streamline our procedures. I remind everyone, we started out with nearly a 90 page policy manual. Right now we're at, I think, 45 pages. So I think we've fulfilled our mandate. 
but this is more to make this more usable and productive for for the for the LNC. So I'm just scrolling through the changes um, at any time. Even if I passed it, please let me know if there's any questions and myself or any member of the committee, I'm sure, would be happy to answer this blackout section. It's just because it dealt with APRC and we're postponing that. Does anyone have any uh, any any questions or any discussion on this item? Hmm. Okay, so I feel you like see, we most of the it. changes were in the beginning. Okay. Um, this we did. Um, just wanted to bring this, uh, highlighted this to the attention just to make sure um, that the treasurer did take a special look at this. Um, we're not moving anything with that yet. That highlighted one, I had forgot to note that. That is remaining in the policy manual. We will be going over that with the treasurer. Okay. What page are you at? It's so small on my screen. Oh, it is page 37 of 48. Okay. Okay, do any LNC members have any questions? Any anything the rest of that's else? Appendices. We did not change the appendices. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say anything else you want to highlight. I no, um, Madam Chair. Okay. And this I will complete the bulk of the mandate you had given us to streamline the policy manual. The okay. committee will then meet on an ad hoc basis as needed to address issues such as working with staff on APRC. Um, if any other committee chair or any LNC members sees an area of deficiency, the committee will convene, you know, again, on an ad hoc basis to, uh, you know, recommend further changes. I can also let you know that we're working with staff on changes, there it, there was a concern that was brought up by the the bylaws committee about something that passed last term mm -hmm. of uh, pet and children memberships. Um, the word membership cannot be used for any entity yeah. that doesn't sign the pledge. Um, we're not getting rid of this fun honorary thing, but we are going to need to retitle it because it is a bylaws violation at this point. Um, that wasn't done intentionally. I was on that LNC. It just never really occurred to them. It does make explicit there that these are for people who can't sign the pledge, but we can't use the word member. So a new word will be come up. We're working with the executive director for marketing purposes because this is a, a fun thing for people with their pets. So yeah. we don't have any changes to that yet, but that will be something we will be bringing to the committee. Okay, great. So it'll be pet, you know, membership, companion, pledge, whatever. Whatever, membership. Um, I like that. That is whatever, clever. <laughs> whatever, whatever staff and marketing and and, and uh, the LNC is comfortable with, that's what we're going to go with. Okay. And I welcome um, suggestions from members because I'm sure people will have some clever things. You know, the thing I'd come up with might be boring. I was, was companion of liberty, but I like from friendship or that was really cute so <laughs> please if you have cute ideas send them to the committee we would love to hear them yeah okay, paw patrol on, on that note i think someone had asked which staff and karen Ann, as you mentioned it um uh, i'm liaising with uh, karen ann on this but we're doing just an entire overview to make sure anything um that is uh for sale or for donation on the website is ultra clear and how does that relate to membership we're, we're just doing a marketing overhaul on that and we're super open to ideas from anyone who has them thanks and if I could add one more thing, Madam Chair, um, Ken Molman had brought to the committee some suggestions, which we actually incorporated. Mm -hmm. If any member who's listening has um, looked at the policy manual and thinks something, you know, needs to be clear or they something needs to go or whatever it might be, um, this committee is totally open to hearing your ideas 
and um, taking them into consideration. So you can route the communication to me at secretarylp.org and I will forward it on. But if you wanted to individually address the committee, it's myself, Mr. Elliott and Ms. Yaniscavage. All right, great. Um, so if, if there's no further discussion, let's go ahead and go to a roll call vote, which I think would be the best thing to do procedurally, especially since we didn't have a lot of discussion on this. Okay. Um, I will skip for one moment. Um, the chair, Mr. Banner. Yes. Mr. Blankenship. Yes. Mr. Bowen. Yes. Mr. Duque. Yes. Has anyone from Region 6 joined us, Mr. Eklund or Mr. T uh, Tunjevich? Okay, Ms. Eiler. I don't believe yet. Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. Ms. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Hagopian? Yes. I will vote yes, Mr. Nana? I will come back to him, Mr. Nicola. Yes. Mr. Rufo, I don't believe he has yet joined us. Mr. Smith, I don't think so either. Mr. Watkins. Yes. Mr. Nana. Sorry, I had to tab over to the meeting to mute to unmute myself. I vote yes. Okay, Madam Chair, um, it is thirteen zero zero. Great. Motion passes. All right, let's move on to our next agenda item. One moment. Mm -hmm. Is candidate trainings, Madam Chair. All right, fantastic. Let me see if I can get people to go over to the reactions and by a raise of hands, who on here is a state chair or would be involved in planning uh, candidate trainings or doing candidate support in your state? Love to see some hands. Throw your hands in the air. Hands up. Look at all those beautiful hands. Woo! I want to see more hands. All right. Well, that's a good amount of hands. So we have, um, we have, uh, I'm blinking. Either if either our treasurer or our executive director could answer what we have set aside for candidate trainings or candidate support in our budget. I had the number in my head and now I've lost it. Yes, we have budgeted 49,000 for candidate support and candidate um, uh, campaign uh, contributions, I believe. So Great. from within that, yeah, we can do a number of things, including candidate trainings. Okay. So here's the opportunity that we have. We are going to be able to do regional trainings and the cost, um, this is going to be courtesy of Leadership Institute, who is very excited to work with us. And they're going to work with us on custom um, trainings as well so that we get exactly what we need, which is really great. The cost to fly everyone out, put on the trainings, put them up, feed them and so on and so forth per, per regional training is going to be about $4,000. So the best thing to do right now is to get together with your region, with your state chairs or whoever it is, a political director, candidate chair, whoever is in charge of this, and start talking about where you would want to have a regional training and when. Because I would like to get you all in touch with the Leadership Institute so that you can start planning those trainings. Now, if it's $4,000 and there are eight regions, that's going to cost some money. Uh, the best way to handle this is for the regions to split the cost with the LNC. That's going to keep your cost down and that's going to keep our cost down. And it's going to give us more opportunities to help candidates put together online trainings and get additional resources. Um, now, do any LNC members have any questions on this? I'm not going to, this is a discussion only item at this point. So we're not having a motion. Okay, so let me go back to hands. So if you're going to lower your hand if you're not in the LNC now, but thank you all. Um, Pat Ford, go right ahead. So, yeah, we're, we're enthusiastically looking forward to this. Yeah. Um, just a couple of things. This is $4,000 per region. Uh, this includes on-site travel. This is an on-site or is this virtual? Yes, this is on-site. They're coming to you. Excellent. So the only they need extra a, cost 
they need at least six weeks in advance, you know, and I think you should probably have at least two months to get to let people get their travel arrangements and, and so on and so forth. But they, they want to make this happen. We talked about it um, towards the end of last year. Um, so yeah, good times. So traditionally the, the local affiliates picked up the cost of the uh, actual facilities. So this is $2,000 plus the cost of the facilities is that what we're looking at. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's, that's what you're looking at. All right. Great. And, and then uh, uh, Robert could help us in the region. We've already voted to approve something similar. So I, I think largely this will be a formality and we're looking to do it as quickly as possible in region eight. Uh, great. Uh, so, and then Mr. Krause would be available to help us with his uh, normal virtuoso travel arrangements. Okay. So you're the, you're the region rep. So I can, I can designate you the point of contact. Yep. Um, Great. So I'm going to, you and um, our executive director and I will, will connect on this a little bit mm -hmm. and we'll start getting things set up. Great. We're going to need to, uh, we're going to need to see how everyone else is feeling about this setup, but um, yeah, I'm excited. Okay. Yeah, no, we're, um, uh, we've actually picked out a city and everything. So we're, we're ready to roll as, 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 you know, as soon as we can. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Dustin Nana. All right, so um, we had already been in discussions with this other chairs around here. Ohio, this year, Ohio has what's called their conference year where we do no business. So we do other things to fill up the time. We were already planning on having a regional event. So it would be great to incorporate this within that. We're looking at late July. Um, we haven't signed a contract with the venue yet, but it'll be in the Dayton area. So <clears throat> I guess I will keep you posted who should be my liaison um, on our end to pass things through and then maybe possibly have them attend a meeting with maybe the state chairs here to make sure that we're all in agreement to, to do this at the same time. I will connect you with the leader um, Institute leadership Institute um, liaison. Perfect. I appreciate it. And then also staff will obviously be involved in this because it involves spending money, but everybody has been briefed on this, this plan, which is so flexible, which is great. Thank you. Oh. You are welcome. Okay, Mr. Dave Benner. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Actually, Dustin stole a little bit of my thunder about what I was going to ask, but I just was curious as to whether you knew what this entailed. I know you gave us some figure, but is there any specifics or guidelines about like how many hours they plan to do the training, anything like that? Or should we just work all of those details out through the Institute? Just curious if there's more on that. It's two full days of training. Um, so they would probably fly in on a Friday night. We would put them up in a hotel. They would get settled. They would put together stuff to have at least uh, two courses each day. And uh, we're going to work with them. I'm going to get feedback actually from the, from the state chairs on what those courses should be. Generally, the feedback we've already gotten is treasurer trainings and um, campaign management trainings. They have said that they want to do treasurer trainings, but that's probably something best taken care of online, or we might need an additional, um, we might need an additional support from another organization because it's different state by state. So I'm going to get additional feedback and I'll work with staff on how to collect that. Um, and, and I don't know, maybe it'll be a little bit slightly different region by region. I'm going to try to keep it as, as concise as possible, but uh, they, they're asking you're welcome. They're asking for us to put up staff in a hotel, you know, feed them, pay for their travel and so on and so forth. Um, and so the best way to lower the cost, obviously, is for the regional um, chairs to get together and, and figure out, you know, how are we going to split this and then find the most affordable um, venue. But otherwise, this is this is very flexible. All right. Any other questions about that? So you can, um, oh, yes, Mr. Todd Hagopian. I just wanted to pipe in here real quick. Uh, this is slightly above the budget that we had in for this. Um, however, far under the total budget. So this is fine. And this is why we built the budget to be flexible. Um, but this would be about $4,000 above what we thought this initiative was going to cost. Not saying good or bad. Just wanted to be clear. For, on. Okay. For in-person training? Uh, yeah, I think we had it at mm -hmm. uh, $3,000 and then it would be split by the state. 
Um, so I just wanted to, to throw that out there. Okay. The rest of the money was for, you know, miscellaneous projects that would come up. So that's all this is eating into. Uh, but I just wanted to be clear what we had in our mind while we were making the budget. But again, we made this budget this way so that we could be flexible and move it into this project or that project. So, Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Hagopian. Mr. Nikayla? Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to say um, we are in contact uh, with the folks that are doing the training here in Florida. We're hoping to, uh, we just got in contact last week. So my convention committee chair is working with them. We're trying to figure out some numbers, but we're hoping on the April 21st, 22nd to have the trainings in Orlando, Florida for region two, anybody else that would like to, to come down. So it's still in the works. Um, we're still working out a price, figure out what we can accommodate them already for, for free, obviously food, things like that, what, what the bill is going to be. Um, but, uh, but we're really looking forward to it. These guys were the willing to work with us and hopefully it's going to be a relationship for future trainings we, we, we might do in Florida in general. So, uh, we're really looking forward to this and, um, just, uh, just a heads up that, uh, you know, at least, at least one region's already in the works and, uh, we should have something up here pretty soon. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Mr. Nikayla. Okay, um, that's all I have on that agenda item. So we'll continue to work on that offline. Well, let's move on to our next agenda item, which is fill APRC vacancy. I believe this was agendized by Mr. Ford. I, I actually stuck it on there, Ms. Uh, uh, Madam Chair. However, um, nobody had yet nominated anyone, maybe... Maybe I didn't like, I should have probably explicitly stated that, but we do oh, need yeah. to fill the APRC. We don't we have necessarily nominations. have to do it this meeting, um, but it's noticed for this meeting if there are um, nominations. I actually have a nomination to make if the person would accept it, and that is Ms. Carrie Eiler. However, I don't know if Ms. Eiler would accept the nomination, but if she would, I would like to nominate her for the APRC. Seconded. There we go. Um, Dave, is that what you were also raising your hand to do? It was, Madam Chair. I stole your thunder. Okay, <laughs> okay thunder stealer. Okay, let's hear from Ms. Eiler. I accept. I have already um, done quite a, a bit of work for the, most of the team, and I've actually written one of the emails that apparently sailed through APRC. So, I'm happy to do this. It's a good fit based on my experience. I have about, well, decades of experience in marketing and promotions, especially at kind of a corporate level where I'm reporting to a CEO. And if I make us look bad, I'm the one that's on the hook for it. So I'm happy to serve in this capacity and keep us true to our, um, our principles and our platform. Thank you so much, Ms. Eiler. All right. Do we have any other nominations? Going once, going twice, and sold to Ms. Eiler. Actually, we need to take a vote. Just kidding. Well, I already set up the template, so here we there go. There we go. Um, so uh, to just make the formal motion, since there's no further nominations, is that um, Carrie Eiler... Uh, be appointed to fill the vacancy on the APRC. Let me just stick this on here. Second. If it needs one. Mr. Banner? Yes. Mr. Blankenship? Yes. Second, I have my cap lock on and that will bother me. Mr. Bowen? Yes. Mr. Duque? Yes. Uh, Mr. Eklund, I'm just checking. I don't think anyone else came in. Um, Ms. Eiler? Pass. Mr. Elliott? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. Ms. Gabbard? Yes. Mr. Hagopian? Yes. I will vote yes, Mr. Nana? Yes. Mr. Nikayla? Yes. Mr. Rufo? Oh, he's not here. Mr. Smith? 
don't think so. Um, Ms. Watkins, I mean, excuse me, I didn't mean to change your gender. <laughs> okay. Mr. Yeah. Watkins, but you could be Miss Watkins for this meeting if you if be whatever you I want. No judgment. <laughs> I'll vote yes. Okay, um, Madam Chair, it is 12 0. Oh, Ms. Eiler. I'll throw a yes in. Okay, Ms. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, 13 0 0. <sighs> I wish we had everyone else here. Um, I'll vote yes, it can be unanimous. 14 0 There we go. All right. Um, that is our last agenda item. I can do, uh, we can do public comment again if anybody would like. Oh, look. Mike Rufo is joining us. Oh, okay. I'll update, I'll update that. Um, if you don't see Madam Chair, Ms. Houston raised her hand and Mr. Madden raised his hand. Ms. Houston, go right ahead. Awesome. Just one bit of housekeeping. We put a note about this on the LNC business list the other day. Um, after every month concludes, there's a bit of time the staff takes to document any um, metrics around membership and our financial position. And as we let everyone know last week, we are in the middle of updating all of our membership reports. If any members, um, of course, or the board um, have any uh, thoughts on ways that we could streamline those monthly reports that come out, we would love to hear from you. Uh, really, those reports should be very useful to the body. So uh, that is the objective. And we look forward to getting out a new one um, for the very first month of 2023, which comes out in February. And just so no one is surprised uh, because it's going to be a new report and it takes a bit of time to collate all that data. It will come out a little bit later than usual. Um, we're expecting around, um, I think, the 15th or 20th, and I'm looking forward to working with Robert on that. So hope that doesn't surprise anyone. And if you are a membership director or a state chair and you're needing your state membership data for any reason, feel free to reach out to the staff and we'd love to get that to you individually. Um, but looking forward to have a clean report soon. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Ms. Houston. Up next, we have Nathan Madden. Nathan, go right ahead. Hello again, everyone. Nathan Madden, Arizona. Uh, just wanted to reiterate that the CRM is the single strongest tool that we have. So please, please, please support the CRM. Thank you very much, Mr. Madden. Up next, we have TJ Cozen again. Hey, everyone. Um, from Pennsylvania. Um, I'm on the, uh, the secretary for LP candidate support. Um, we encourage all candidates to fill out the form and ask us for help. That's why we were formed. Unfortunately, you know, we can't help everyone financially, but we can help with social media. If we need to boost your page, things like that. Um, the only thing that we're needing from the LNC is basically we want a clear cut parameter on what you want us to judge each candidate on, you know, because like for us, we're kind of a newer committee, which, well, there was one person running candidate support, basically. Um, we need, we're kind of winging it when we judge these candidates. So we need to know what's a deciding factor by the executive committee or whether they receive the funds or don't. Are we going off of just a winnable race? Are we going off of, well, a look good for the messaging? How do you want us to judge them with a limited budget? And that's pretty much all I have. <laughs> Thank you very much. That is, that is helpful. Okay, up next we have Mr. Dean Davison. Once again, I'd like to thank the work that uh, the LNC is doing. I would like to say a few things. Um, I am uh, past chair of uh, the state of Virginia. I would like to actually give a shout out because she is on on the meeting listening in to uh, our current chair, Jennifer Leatherberry, who has done a very good job um, pushing things forward uh, in our state. And of course, Andrew Walkins and Otto for you know being in the region. I appreciate all the hard work you guys have done. 
uh, to keep Virginia alive and get us out of that garbage that happened a couple months ago. And uh, I'm happy, like I said, to be on the awards committee now and uh, proud of that. And, and just thank you guys for all the support you guys have been doing uh, for all of us. So I just wanted to give that shout out also to Miss Leatherberry for her hard work uh, being the chair now um, for uh, state of Virginia and making our party look good here. Thank you very much, Mr. Davison. Up next, we have George Phillies. Uh, George Phillies, Massachusetts. Uh, first, congratulations to Karen Ann Harlos and her group for shrinking the manual so much. Please keep up the good work. Second, with respect to outreach, uh, not specifically with respect to the anti-war event, uh, there has been a historical tendency for libertarians to do outreach to the right, but not to the left. It, this got somewhat severely out of balance at times, and it would be worthwhile to be sure that we find issues that will are libertarian issues that will appeal to liberals as opposed to conservatives, people who can be brought into our movement if we do it well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phillies and Ms. Hartlos. Uh, actually, George Phillies inspired me to to um, say some things. And don't worry, George, they're not bad. Uh, <laughs> um, in Colorado, um, we have been blessed with having some of the best ballot access laws in the country. That blessing is attempting to be put to an end, sponsored by the Colorado GOP, Boo, Hiss. Um, and just to know that we have great relationships here in Colorado with the Green Party and with other more of the minor parties here are left-leaning parties, but um, constantly, at least me personally, um, and the state party when it can on, on voter reform and things like that, that we work constantly with people who are more on the left. I would also remind members that on the RCB speech, um, what our invited guest speaker to the LNC was Linda Templin. Most people may not know she's a, a Green Party activist very much to the left. I enjoyed her comment when she said, when you go far enough left, you get your guns back. I love that comment, but I just find it somewhat disheartening. There's going to be legitimate criticisms of all leadership, but all of our coalitions and we've invited speakers, we've actively courted the left. Um, and I thank George for recognizing that that has, has happened. And I hope that continues because we are we are not conservative, we are not progressive, we are libertarian, and we can work with everybody. Love it. Thank you so much, Ms. Harlos. All right, there's only one thing left on tonight's agenda. Uh, Madam Chair, I would move, move to, to adjourn. Okay. And then go to the executive committee meeting that that <clears throat> is correct. Okay, so it's been moved by like half of the committee and seconded um, that we adjourn. Any objections? Going once, going twice. We are adjourned at 8.03 p.m. This is fantastic. Uh, that was a really short meeting. Amazing. Okay, so... Let's think about how we're going to do this function wise. We have an executive committee meeting immediately following this. So everyone, please stick around. That is a non-voting meeting. Most of it will take place in executive session. And I'll, I'll make the announcement and explain so on and so forth once we get into that meeting. But Ms. Harlos, what's the easiest thing for us to all do um, for you? Well, um, I would ask the chair if we expect any motions to come out of this. If we do expect any motions then um, we would all just go into our room um, and leave everyone here. Um, if we don't expect any motions, then what we normally do is say, you know, this is pretty much it for um, the public session. I always do add the motion to adjourn to the YouTube video at the end so that people see we do come out of executive session and all we do is move to right. adjourn, even though that's technically not necessary under parliamentary procedure that is in fact um what we do um have we called so the first thing is you'd call the executive committee meeting to order 
make the decision as to whether we expect any motions, give the reasons for go- we need to move to go into executive session, give the reasons for doing so. And uh, that would be it. Okay. All right. Well, um, we're going to take a short break and stand at ease for about five minutes between each meeting. Cause I'm going to go check on my baby real quick. Cause he's not in the room with me and everyone else can take a bathroom break. So I'm going to, I intend to call us to order at eight ten PM for our executive committee meeting. And we can all hang out right here. All good. Yeah. Thank you, Madam chair. Okay. All right. Karen, I'm sorry. Did you send a link out to to join the executive committee meeting? It will remain in this room. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, it will remain in this room. So we're just standing at ease for another like four minutes, I suppose. Well, it's not even at ease. We haven't called the executive committee meeting to order. So to do a bathroom break, I'm going to go take advantage of that. So I will be back in a few minutes, but it will be this meeting. Um, And I guess we're just waiting for word from the chair as to whether we expect any motions to come out of it, in which case we'll, we'll... all get booted into that breakout room. If there are no um, motions um, coming out of it, then it'll just only the LNC members Um, remain. Madam Secretary? Yes. Yeah, this is Mr. Bowen. Are we still live streaming? We are until we go into executive session. Okay, thank you. Because the executive committee meeting is public up to the point we move to go into executive session. Um, so I, we're standing at ease at this moment, and uh, I will be back in a few moments, please. Are, are we standing at ease, or are we between meetings? We're actually between meetings. Okay. okay. Librarian. <laughs> Being such a librarian, Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, I just want to take this opportunity to say hello to everybody. I'm sure I sounded like a broken record there. And Nathan, I thank you for being Mr. CRM. I always look forward to your cheerleading for the CRM each meeting. Hey, you know, somebody's got to do it. It's a dirty job. All right, I'll be back in a moment. Anyone read any good books recently? I started Gulag Archipelago. Mm, that is a good one. Probably. That is a very, very depressing book. Oh, I'm well aware. <laughs> I started Thomas Paine, A Lifetime of Radicalism. <laughs> I heard good things. I'm actually helping to translate a book into Spanish. It's called Corona Fascism by Alu Axelman. No, oh, it's a good one. That actually reminds me. I, I, I don't know if anybody here would be willing, but uh, the Arizona Libertarian Party is currently looking for translators for Spanish. If anybody knows anybody, please send them, uh, send them our way. I can help with that. So who would I contact? Um, Brandon Slayton for Maricopa County. And then um, I believe Michael can McFarland. It, can you put it into the uh, chat? Uh, well, I, yeah, I'll, I'll just. I'll and just I'll copy the, and paste uh, it. Yeah. I'll send you their party emails. Books I've recently read. Uh, Cambridge New History of the Western World, um, Volume 7, which gets us up to the French Revolution and the first battles, 
Uh, the latest novel by McDevitt, which I believe is be was written as a I'm going to shut down this series because I'm old enough I'm retiring. Baby's good. Yay. He's a good baby. All right, are we all back? We are. Okay, let's see here. Angela, Karen Ann. Do we have Stephen Nicola? Rich Bowen? Hey guys, I'm here. Oh. You're there? Okay. Do I have Brian Elliott? Here. All right. Okay, so it's 8, 12 p.m. I'm gonna call this executive committee session to order. And um, Madam Secretary, would you like to take roll call? Yeah, just give me one second. So you said yep. uh, 8, 12. Yep. Okay. All right, so Ms. Ricardo? Present. Is Mr. Smith present? I don't believe so. Mr. Hagopian? here and i am present so that's the executive committee onto the lnc mr blankenship oh no I'm I'm, no sorry that's not the entire executive committee huh i'm such an idiot mr bowen i'm going to do the executive committee first mr bowen i am here mr elliott i'm still here mr nikaela present that's the executive committee so moving on to the lnc mr blankenship yes i'm here uh, Mr. Rufo. Yes. Mr. Banner. I see um, him. Oh, you're just calling. Yeah. Okay. I That's see why you, I was Mr. kind Banner. of asking why people, if people were here, because I, I think people might have stepped away. Okay. Well, we'll come back. Mr. Duque. Here. Ms. Eiler. Present. Mr. Ford. Here. Ms. Gabbard. Here. Mr. Nana. I am here. Mr. Watkins. Here. I don't believe Mr. Clark has come in. Mr. Cowan. I'm here. Mr. Dassing. Here. I have not seen Mr. Hall, Mr. Daniel. Present. Mr. Pankey. Here. I don't think um, Mr. Tunyevich has come. Uh, Ms. Yeniskavich. Here. Okay, going back to Mr. Banner. Well, for right now, he's a ghost. Um, if he starts talking, we'll we'll know. Uh, we can check back in in a bit, but for right now, I'm putting his him as absent. So, Madam Chair, the entire executive committee, except for Mr. Smith, is present, and out of the LNC, um, Mr. Benner, Mr. Eklund, Mr. Clark, Mr. Hall, and Mr. Tunyevich are absent. All right. Thank you very much. I'm trying to see. Sorry. So small. The share screen is so small on my screen. I just answered Mr. Um, 
Nepam, you see now, um, we're still in public session. We have not moved to go into executive session. So we are, it, it, we are intentionally still streaming. Right. Okay. So we're going to be talking about two things tonight. We're going to be talking about legal updates in the states of um, New Mexico, Massachusetts, possibly Michigan, and any, can anyone, is there another state? Virginia, possibly, with the Tidewater Virginia. stuff. Virginia. Okay. Okay, any other states? I oh, actually, yes, I do want to bring up the, the unfolding situation in Colorado. Um, it's a ballot access issue, but it is a legal um, thing that I do want to give the LNC a heads up on. Got it. Okay, it's technically a legal issue in a state. Okay, any any other states? Okay, so if not, then uh, I'm going to move that we go into executive session to discuss uh, legal issues in Massachusetts, New Mexico, Michigan, Colorado, and Virginia, and uh, to discuss a couple of staffing issues. Second. Okay, any objections? Hearing none, going once, going twice. Okay, we are moving into executive session. Hey, give me one moment to stop the stream and stop the recording and ask, oh, are there, are there any motions expected to come out of this, Ms. Madam Chair? No, none. Okay, so um, I suppose then we would ask the members of the public to um, depart um, as this would end all of the business. I'll, Give a few moments for that. I'm going to stop the stream. I'm going to stop our manual recording and and give that notice. Um, I, I had mentioned that the chair did state during um, on the notice given on the public list that we would also be discussing um, confidential staff issues. And those were also discussed. And I'll make sure the minutes reflect that. Great. I would move to adjourn the executive committee meeting. Second. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Any objections? Going once, going twice. Okay. Hearing none, we are adjourned from this executive committee meeting at 10, 10 PM Eastern time. Thank you everyone. And I will see you at the next meeting or chat with you online. And Good by night. the way, everyone, our next meeting, will, there, we will not have an electronic meeting in March because that special rule of order we passed said you, we don't have the monthly electronic meetings if there's going to be an in-person meeting within 30 days before or after. And we're having an in-person meeting, what, March 10th-ish, somewhere around there. So there's no March electronic meeting. Our next meeting will be in person.